Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to one of my favorite videos to film at the end of the year. This is my planning to pan video for next year. So basically, this is where I talk to you about all the products that I want to have in a project pan in the following year, hopefully finish, but at least start panning them. And so I'm so excited because I feel like this video is so fun. I love like planning and thinking about these things. And it's just been really nice to go through my collection and pick out things that I want to work on. I did want to touch briefly on last year's planning to pan because I feel like it's just interesting to think about. In 2024, I had on my planning to pan list 10 different products in a project pan. I worked on all 10 of them, and I have, at this point, officially panned one, two, three, four, five, and I expect to finish up a couple more that are on this list, and a couple of these are going to be moving over to 2025. So I'd say successful because all 10 of them made it into a project pan and like 50% are completed. Although I, I expect that number to creep up to like the 70 or 80%. So I'm quite happy with that. And like I said, a couple are going to be talked about in this year's planning to pan because they couldn't quite finish them, which is okay. I'm thinking that we can get them done next year. I think if you watch my videos, you probably have a sense of which products I'm talking about, but without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the products that I wanna finish up in 2025. Starting first with base, I have picked out two products actually. The first is my Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This is like my favorite foundation that I own right now and I just like, I absolutely love it. I go, like if I'm going out, like the other night my husband and I went to dinner, we went and saw a show, this was the foundation that I chose instead of my tinted moisturizer. It's just very good. It doesn't feel super cakey like some of my other foundations that I have unfortunately feel like, and I don't think they're actually cakey. I think I'm just so used to using a tinted moisturizer on a regular basis that they feel cakier than that. But this, I don't feel like it. I get higher coverage, but I also feel like this mixes really well with my tinted moisturizer, so I can adjust the coverage and the feel of it. I'm very excited about trying to pan this. I feel like we're about here in this product, so there's like a significant amount of foundation, so I think this one's gonna be a long haul product, something that I'm really gonna have to focus and work on, so we will see, but optimistically, I would like to pan this one in 2025. And then I also pulled in another lighter coverage product. This is my Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. The reason being is because, like I just said, I prefer something lighter a lot of times for work. I'm just wearing something very light. I've been actively panning my pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer. As you can see, that is almost done. And I think it's just nice having something like that in the works, especially if like I wanna mix these two together or if I just want something light on its own. And yeah, that's why I, this is the only other option in my collection. And I'm like, well, I might as well try and finish that up before I buy something new. So that is why I'm thinking that I'm going to try and pan this one next year as well. Moving on to powders, I have one like just general powder. This is my Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I already have a pin on this one and I'm actually currently working on this in in my 2024 project pan. This wasn't listed in my planning to pan last year, but it's something that I just rolled in because I wanted something else to work on. And I think I'm gonna probably pretty easily be able to finish this up in the like first half of 2025. So at that point, maybe I'll start working on another powder, but in terms of like what I really wanna pan for next year, it's just this one for powder. And then for bronzer, I was debating between two. Neither one had pan. This is my Marc Jacobs bronzer. And then I also have this Milani bronzer, but I've been pretty regularly using both of these and I feel like they're both very close to hitting pan And so I was like, well, which one do I want to work on for next year? And I selected my Marc Jacobs bronzer I think I might be a little optimistic here because there's obviously a ton of product in here and to finish all of that up is going to be difficult, but this is the one I'm picking. I think I'm gonna work on this in my Shop My Stash for the rest of November, which it's currently in, and I might select it again for December just to get a head start on 2025 panning, but this is the one I'm picking. I was hoping to see a pan in this by the end of this year, so we will see. That will certainly give me a lot more motivation going into 2025 if I can get a pan in this in 2024, but you never know, so there's that. 
And then the last powder product that I am focusing on in 2025 is this Too Faced blush in the shade Baby Love. I rolled this into a Shop My Stash recently and I was thinking that I was going to be decluttering it because it does have hard pan around the outsides and I thought it wasn't going to perform. But in fact, the product that doesn't have hard pan where the actual pan in performs quite well. So what I think I'm gonna do is figure out a way either with tape or just scrape off that hard pan and then focus on this product next year. This is probably my oldest blush now. I feel like I've worked through a lot of my blushes over the last few years. I finished a blush this year, for example, and so I think I'm just gonna hone in on this one and get this one done. I don't think there's a ton of product left in here, but it can be deceiving, as you all know, if you pan. So we will see what happens with this one. I think once I get that hard pan off, maybe grow that pan a little bit, I'll be able to repress and then hopefully be able to focus and get this one done. So that is also on my list for next year. And then I was thinking I wanted to finish a setting spray. I typically pan a setting spray every year. I finished my e.l.f. setting spray earlier this year and then I've just been kind of bouncing back and forth in my shop, my stash between my Urban Decay All Nighter and then my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush. And I'm thinking that I can probably pretty easily finish my Urban Decay All Nighter. Unfortunately, I can't see where the product is in here, but it, it's definitely less than halfway is what I'm thinking based on how it feels and how it sounds. So I'm thinking this one won't be too difficult to finish next year and I can kind of clear that out of my collection. I want to try new setting sprays and so I like to be able to finish what I have before I buy new. This one I think will always be in my collection, some version of this, because I, right now it's like the one that I feel like sets my makeup the best. And so when these kind of do the same things and I'm I feel like this one does a better job and they're around the same price point. I'm gonna lean towards the Charlotte Tilbury one, which is why I think it just makes sense for me to try and finish this one up. And then I can try other ones that are currently on the market. So that is my focus for next year. And like I said, I don't think that one will be too difficult. And then I have a lip product that I'm thinking about working on. This is my Maybelline Lifter Gloss. So currently right now, I'm panning my Fenty Fussy Gloss. This one I feel like is a dupe for that. And I have some decent progress, like there's a gap like right here in this lip gloss. So I'm thinking it won't be too difficult. That, the Fenty lip gloss is just such an easy day-to-day -day lip gloss that I can wear literally whenever and it always works. And so I'm, I'm thinking this will kind of be that same vibe, which hopefully I can move through this one. It's taken me a long time to make progress on the Fenty one. I think I've been working on it all year. I'm getting very close to being done with it, hoping to be done with it before the end of the year. But hopefully I can move a little bit faster on this one in 2025. We will see, you never know. And then I have a couple of rollover products from last year's Planning to Pan that are unfortunately making it into this year's Planning to Pan. The first one will be no surprise if you watch any of my videos. It's my Avon liner. This one is, it's so little guys, like we're so close to finishing this one up. I'm going to work on it for the rest of November and into December and then we will roll it into our project pan at the beginning of January and we're just going to work on it until we finish it. The goal for this one is just to work on it until I can't sharpen anymore. So if I can't get the grip to sharpen it, that means it's done. We are very close to that. We are very, very close to that. So I just need to keep using it. I don't wanna just over sharpen it just to sharpen it. So like I'm only sharpening it when I needs to be sharpened. So we're definitely doing this one for real, but I'm not gonna just waste my products for this project. So in any case, we are continuing to push ahead on that one. And then the other product that I'm thinking won't be done by the end of this year is my EOS chapstick. If for some reason I get this done by the end of this year, I will be very excited, but I have a little bit of doubt in that. And so because of that, I wanna roll it into next year because this would be something that I would roll in at the beginning of the project to get done right away. Just wanna make sure that this one gets finished up and I don't just forget about it come 2025 and just have like the tiniest little bit left. That drives me crazy and sometimes I do that. So I want to make sure that I'm setting myself up for success and that I'm just not getting almost done with something and then forgetting about it. So that's why this is going to hopefully be either finished at the end of 2024 or rolled in and finished at the beginning of 2025. But yeah, that is everything that I am planning to plan for 2025. And really, I feel like these videos just hopefully set me up for success, give me a list of things that I can focus on. I can hopefully be a little bit strategic in what I'm picking in that I'm not just working on things that are all, have a ton of product. What I like to do to keep the motivation there is 
you know, put in some long haul products at the beginning because you're gonna need the whole year to work on them, but also put in some like gimme products or some easier products so that when you finish them, you're feeling motivated about picking up something new and working on that. That's something that I highly recommend if you're new to project panning to just give yourself a little bit of a like a rotational so like things are going out while you're still working on other stuff it definitely helps keep the motivation alive while you're panning i am so excited for next year's project pans i hope you all are i hope you're excited for the rest of this year's pans i'm excited to finish everything up do my year-end makeup empties all the good stuff that comes at the end of the year i feel like we get hit back to back to back with a lot of good videos in like the november december time frame because everything's wrapping up you're kind of getting to see the full picture of how everyone's project pans and then beginning of January it's like we're kicking off all the new projects which is super exciting as well so I hope all of you enjoyed this video I hope you liked seeing what I'm planning to pan in 2025 if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will talk to you in my next one bye